Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. So let's pray. Father, thank you that we get to be in the house and we just pray that you make all of this stuff work together that we can make the video for those that are far off that want to hear your word. We pray for the ones that have tuned in um, through the Russian Facebook, Lord. We pray for those believers that are, are holding to their faith in places that are persecuted for their faith. In fact, we, we start by praying for our brothers and sisters in those places that are being persecuted right now. Lord, we thank you. We have freedom to gather in the house and, and to have your word open before us and not have to worry about that. So, we just pray, strengthen us and, and let us be a light to those that need that light. And we ask that now in Jesus' name. <coughs> Everyone that agreed with me said? Amen. 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 Well, we're going to continue our study in Romans 12 as we continue the topic of letting love be without hypocrisy. Back in verse 9, we, we've been going step by step at each line, breaking it down as Paul really gives, I call it the rubber meets the road, for your Christian walk. How do you really be a Christian who loves without being a hypocrite? You know, you ever run into those hypocritical Christians that, you know, they'll say, oh, I'm a Christian, but then they, they don't really live like like Christ would, would have you live. And that, you know, I like Paul's instructions because he like breaks it down step by step by step. Here's how you love without being a hypocrite. So we, we saw over the last couple of weeks that that love has to begin with first being um, a person that abhors what is evil in verse 9. You hate what is evil and you cling to what is good. Whenever you're, you're going to be living life without hypocrisy, you have to be a person that, that is, is holding on to the good things. You live for the good things and you, and you abhor, which means you hate. You hate it enough to turn away from it. To turn away from evil, you're like, look, I, I don't want that in my life. I don't want that. that you, don't, you don't go, well, I, I know I shouldn't be around this evil, and I know it's really not good for my spiritual journey and everything and my walk, but, but you know, I just tolerate it because it's around me everywhere. You know, that's not, that's not saying uh, that you have horror evil. That's saying you, you just hang with it. And that's how we have that attitude. Now, you're, are you going to have evil around you even when, I mean, yeah, we, we're, we're in this world, but Jesus said we're to be in this world, but not of this world. So we don't want to be having this world get in us. I've used the example many times before about a boat. A boat is designed to be in the water. There's no trouble when you put a boat in the water. That's because its design is to float on the water. When, the only trouble is when the water gets into the boat. Okay, I mean, it, it's not made to go that way. It's the same with Christians. We're made to be in this world, but we're not made to have the worldly ways be in us. Whenever those worldly ways get in us, it sinks our boat. I mean, we, we don't float as Christians. And people people will call you, you're a Christian and you live like that. That's really worldly of you, you know. Uh, what's the difference? Well, we're, this is Paul saying, here's how to let love be without hypocrisy. How to do it without being a hypocrite. You just... You get rid of that stuff out of you. And in a boat, we use a bilge pump. It's a little pump at the back that has a float, kind of like in the, in the back of your toilet. And, and when the water gets into the boat and it, and it lifts up the little float, it turns on the pump and it pumps out the water that's coming into the boat. Because if you don't keep, you know, constantly, you might notice this if you ever go to a harbor, you'll see boats just sitting there and all of a sudden you hear this splashing noise. You're like, what's going on? And and it's because they have it hooked up so that so that the water that the seeps in, pump. the bilge pump kicks on and, and it pumps it out. Because if you don't have a bilge pump actively working, you're going to wind up with your boat sinking. And same thing for our Christian faith. If we don't have that active cleaning out of that stuff that seeps into us, then we wind up getting sunk. And, and people see it. They're going, man, your boat's going. You're a Christian, but you're not really... You're not really going so good, you know. Your boat's kind of, kind of sinking there, and they and they spot it, and they call it hypocrisy, okay. And and it is. So then we went over how it said we need to be devoted to one another, 
in brotherly love, and we had to give preference to one another in honor, and not lag behind in diligence. And we were to be fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. And then we came to ver verse 12, Romans 12, 12, where we rejoiced in hope, we persevered in tribulation, and lastly, we were devoted to prayer. Now last week I did the study on devotion to prayer and went over some pointers about how when we're devoted to prayer, it's devotion to something isn't just like, I prayed once. Yeah, Pastor, I prayed once. How come I don't get my prayers answered? I don't know how to tell you this, but when you're devoted to something, you do it more than once. You know, it's a, it's a continual thing that we do. And this, this I just want to revisit because this, this part, actually the, the recording didn't turn out last week. And so the, the guys didn't get to hear the part about when we pray. How effective is prayer? What can prayer do? You know, can prayer do anything? And the answer is absolutely it can. But, but this word devoted, I didn't get time to go over this in the Greek. Now, I don't do a lot of Greek or Hebrew word studies for folks because most of them are having enough trouble just doing English. So they don't really, you know, appreciate other languages. But this one, I want to tell you the word that is used in the Greek because it's, it has a really deep meaning. And in, in the Greek, the word to be devoted, it comes from, it, it, it's, it's broke down into, it, it's one of those words that comes from joining a couple words together in, the, in, in its meaning. It comes from, so, so it's pros katera eo. And so it's, the pros, pro in, in Greek is, is um, a prefix for unto, like, going for, for, unto something. But, but, but karteo is um, the word for, for endure or steadfastness. So it's like unto steadfastness. You think that's kind of weird, but, but if you know the root word for, for katereo, it's, it's, it's katros. And katros is the word for power, for dominion, it's strength. And so it's the word that says, this is what you do unto getting strength. Like, literally to get that strength. What do we, what are we, we, we saying above all powers, above all kingdoms, above all glory, all the, you know, it's all about God has all those powers. But this root of this word comes from all strength, and he's the source of all strength. So unto all strength, we want strength, we have to devote ourselves to the, to the one who gives strength. And the one who gives strength says, you want strength? you got to talk to me. Prayer is just talking to the Lord, by the way. I mean, I know some are like, is it a special meditation you do? Is it some special word? No, what it is, is talking to the Lord. To the one is the source of our power. Now, in, in, in Thessalonians, someone asks, where's the verse... That said, pray without ceasing. Well, you guys know, right? First Thessalonians chapter five. It's Paul writing, and he says, he says, rejoice always, pray without ce ceasing, and in everything he said, give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Now, how many of you give thanks in everything? Like, like I did this morning when it was raining. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord! I had to clean my house because everyone's <laughs> coming over, and we're not having. And we're not having church at the beach. And no, no. And we ha we're supposed to give thanks in everything. This is, for it says, for this is God's will for us in Christ Jesus, that we give thanks. Thank you, Lord. Now, we might not understand why or what the Lord is doing. You know, some, my wife, we, we got the privilege many, many years ago when our kids were little to take them on the last minute cruise on the pro uh, Norwegian wind. And when we were on the cruise, we all got sick. Bad. And we were throwing up continuously. The, the poor girls that we had towels all over the floor. What? Except for Jan. Jan's the only one that didn't get sick. How she didn't get sick with all of us throwing up around her, I don't know. But we were all throwing up. And it got so bad that the last night of the cruise, before they all start in a walk. And you, you're supposed to start your cruise in the embarkation place and, and depart at the same spot and if you try to get off in between they're not so happy about it you know they have all these rules and um, you know you have to have your passport because we went down to the Fanning Islands and so we had gone out of US waters and so you, you know the, you, you gotta have your passport just to go down there to get on this little teeny island 
which is the opening shot to Gilligan's Island, by the way. If you ever seen that show, Gilligan's Island, the opening little picture, that's the Fanning Island that we went to. So it was really fun for me because I'm like, wow, this, and I found the little lagoon where the little capsule was when the Russians came and the Gilligan <laughs> thought he was going to get rescued and I'm telling my daughter, take a picture of me, that's the lagoon, you know, and I'm thinking, she has no idea what I'm talking about because I watched it when I was a kid on TV, you know, but we went there. And I'm thinking, this is great, except that when we were there, Daniel started throwing up, and then it started, you know, spreading, and then by the time we came back, two days of sailing back to Hawaii, everyone except my wife was throwing up in the family. And so we, we got to Kona. It was the last stop before they head back to Oahu. So we could have had one more night on the cruise if we would have all been well. But we were right here, and I looked up at our house and I said, we're getting off, man. This is terrible. I mean, it, like, I can't picture taking the kids onto a plane and having them throw up in the bags. And, and I was throwing up, and I was like, you know what, let's just get off. So we packed our stuff, and we went down, and, and they said, you're going to have to go down, and you're going to have to disembark the ship, and this is a special process, and you got to go through all this red tape. And I went down, I told the guy, I said, look, we need to get off. This is where we live. And he says, no, we can't do that, sir. And I said, look, we're really sick. I mean, I'm just barely holding it back right now, but my kid's over there throwing up right now. If you like, I'll bring him over here and let him throw up in your lap. Because I, I said, we're not, we're not, I'm just telling the truth. We're ready to get off now, and um, we're home. So, so I don't like this because, you know, you, you paid the money, you want to eat all the meals you can, and, you know, we could stay one more night, and, and all of the stuff was already, you know, the, the plane tickets to come home was all the, prepared, and. I was like, nope, we're getting off. So we get home, and Keone was our youth leader at the time. He was here at the house. And we go in the kitchen, we smell this weird, funny smell. Like something is, um, something is like that plastic burning smell. Like a, like a house, have you ever smelled a, a house fire where, the, where it's been on fire and, the, and, the, and the, 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 all of the plastic in the house catches fire and it gets that really nasty kind of nauseous kind of gas that comes off of it. Well, we're smelling this weird smell, but it's, we can't see any, any few, you know, no cloud of smoke, no nothing. And we're looking around, and, but it's really strong in the kitchen. So we look all around the kitchen, snoop all around, you know, look, pull the appliances out, nothing. And, and we tell Keone, it kind of smells like some, like there's a fire or something, you know, like something's on fire. Yeah, I've been smelling that. <gasps> Oh, no. <laughs> and so I go out on the lanai where the refrigerators we have for the, the homeless feeding. We have all this stuff. And I, I, it smells really strong by the refrigerator. And I pull the refrigerator forward a little, and the back of it bursts into flames. Wow. And the wire was all melted and, you know, short, direct short. And we we're just like, Lord, if we would have been on that ship, you know, then just one more day then our house could have just burnt up. And, and you know, when it says to give thanks for this is God's will, I didn't feel like giving thanks when I was throwing up. <laughs> and when all the kids were throwing up. I'm just telling you, I, didn't, I don't always feel like this is a great idea, except that I have to, you know, with hindsight, I'm starting to get, I'm picking up on this. That God might know more than me. And maybe in some of those things when, when it seems like he's closing the door, and I'm thinking, well, it's, well, well, you're closing the door to my fun. He's going, yeah, but I'm saving your house. Or I'm doing something for you you don't understand. And we don't always see the big picture. So this is where, if you can receive it, it's better to not try to think we're better than God and need the big picture. We only need the little picture. And the little picture is, just give thanks. And to pray, how often? Well, it's easy. Just, just an attitude of gratitude. Just be praying and, and giving thanks. And even if you don't see why this particular thing is, is, is the way it is, just trust God. The Bible says He causes all things to work together for those that love Him and are called according to His purposes. So He will work things out for you if you just, you just go with His instruction. Paul gave these instructions. I like verse 19 of, 1 Thessalonians 5, he says, and do not quench the Spirit. You know, sometimes we, 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 that small voice is speaking to us to do something, and we're like, ah, psh, nah, nah, that's probably just me thinking I should go help my neighbor, or that's probably just me thinking I should do this thing. And 
you know, don't quench that spirit because that's, that spirit is given to us to lead us. You know, Jesus said, guys, it's to your advantage I go away. I'm going to go to my father's house. But I'm going to send a helper to you and he's going to lead you and he's going to guide you. And he's going to bring to your remembrance all that I've spoken to you. You know, the Lord gave us his spirit to remind us of the, of the things God has already spoke to us. Because we forget pretty quick. You know, we, we think we, we, we know, but, but we forget really quickly that the Lord is speaking to us. I can hear the Sunday school having fun out there. Just like at the beach. We just, you know, it's fine. So, and then verse 20 says, And don't despise prophetic utterances. Now, prophetic utterances are those things when God's Spirit moves a prophet to speak to us. Someone has a gift of prophecy. And they don't speak for themselves, a prophet. A prophet always is the guy who says, Thus saith who? The Lord. The Lord. Yeah. His job isn't to say what he thinks. His job is to say what God has to say in the moment. It would be handy to have what I call a pocket prophet. You know, we got all these, these digital devices. Wouldn't it be nice to have uh, someone in your life that, that they're so tuned into the Lord that when you're like going, I need to know what God wants me to do. Just call up. Hey, what's the Lord say to do? You know? And, and you, you know, I actually have some friends that have been in my life for this journey of my Christian walk for many, many years. But, you know, three decades plus. And they call me and they say, so if the Lord tells you anything for me, please tell me. You know? They, they know. And they go, we know that the Lord speaks to you. And, we, and, and so we, you know, if you should say anything, just call us. Because sometimes we're not always listening. I'm like, that's cheating. You know? I want God to speak to me. And you want me to be the voice for you, you know, from Him? Thanks, but but I got this is where we have to really, you know, not rely on our own thinking. Because a prophet doesn't rely on what he thinks. He relies on the spirit. So here, Paul says, don't quench the spirit and don't despise prophetic utterances. What if the Lord does have someone in your life and, and they have that gift of prophecy? By the way, that is the greatest gift in the whole list of gifts. In for, you read 1 Corinthians 13, 14. What's the greatest of the gifts? Prophecy. He says, because a prophet is just going, he's given to the church to build the church up. You know, some people are really struggling. They're going, God, I just, I'm going to church today. I hope you speak to me. Something. I need to know what you want me to do. And maybe they're facing a real big life decision. It's really nice if you have someone with that anointing that they'll listen to the Lord and say, hey, brother, the Lord's telling me to tell you something from him. You know, when they need it, they're going, yes, I was hoping God would, you know, because I wasn't sure, or maybe they just needed it for a confirmation. They're like, I, I'm not sure if I should start this business, or, or if I should marry that gal, or, you know, we're talking life decisions here. And the Lord, the Lord gives us His Spirit to help us with all these things. She said, I send, my, I'm going to send you a helper. He's going to, He's going to help you. Don't despise Him. Don't, and you know, it's weird because we have some whole sects of Christianity who say we believe in God the Father, we believe in His Son, and we believe in the Holy Spirit, His Holy Ghost, but His Holy Ghost doesn't really operate today like He did back then. That was for them when they needed it. I don't know how to tell you this. I don't buy that. I think we still need the Holy Ghost today. Anyone agree to that? Amen? Yeah. We still need the Holy Spirit to speak to us and help us today. Well, Paul, he, he's, this isn't the only time he talks about this, but James, the half-brother of Jesus, in chapter 5 of James, James also talks about prayer. And he tells us that the effectual, fervent prayer, for, this, is, this is James uh, 5, 6, 16. We were just in Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 and 17. So it's kind of easy for me to remember. Same same chapter, same verses, just a different book. James and, and, uh, and First Thessalonians. He says, and here, James, he says, Confess your sins to one another, verse 16, and pray for one another. So that, it says, so that you may be healed. You know, sometimes we just need to, to call our sin, sin, and say, Lord, forgive us. And the Lord says, He heals us. 
And then it tells us the effectual fervent prayer. This is from the King James. It says, The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Or uh, New American Standard says, that the, the, the effective prayer of a righteous man can accomplish much. You know, when we, when we go to the Lord and pray, don't think it doesn't do anything. It does a lot. We're supposed to do this, and this is something we do all the time. We should be praying all the time. The attitude of prayer. Not, you know, just that the Lord is... It, I, I tell people, it's like you have a... Well, it's like when my daughter Joy calls on FaceTime. See, when she calls on FaceTime, she puts the, the phone there, and she has it on, and she... <laughs> and they're having fun. It's starting to rain, though. They're going to be wet. I mean, it's raining harder. It was raining, but now it's really starting to come down. The, the my, my joints tell me when it's getting worse, and it's coming. It's really raining so, down there. Yeah. Yeah, when we can't see now, we can't hardly see the old airport. That tells us good call to have church here right now. Because, um... Because we look right at where we meet down there, and it's getting all blurry from the raindrops. So, thanks, Lord, for me listening a little. Well, when <clears throat> let me go back to this. When 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 um when we pray and we have this attitude of prayer, it's like Joy puts the the FaceTime on, and she puts her little phone up, and it's pointing at the direction of her in the room because. She's not always in front of it. But she doesn't care because she just wants mom and dad to be on the other side with our phone pointing into the room, you know. And it's a strange thing. It's, it's like you know they're there, but she doesn't always talk to us. She'll be like doing something, answering the phone. Come here, dogs. Feed the dogs. And the whole time, she still got us on the line. And it's like... Well, yeah, of course, Mom. Why should I hang up? Because then that way, what if I want to talk to you? You know what I mean? You're already there. It's already going. So I don't have to call you up. It's, and that attitude is very good. If we would think about it in the application of my prayer life. That I put God on the screen where He's constantly looking at me through the FaceTime. And I'm looking back at Him. And even though I'm doing my stuff, when I need Him, I just go, hey. And He's right there. It's the kind of, I, we used to use the old style analogy of the telephone. That you would call up the Lord and put him on speakerphone, and then you would leave it on. You would never hang the call up. It was always there so that you could talk to him at any time. And he could talk back to you. But some people treat prayer like it's a call that they place, and when they're done giving their request, they hang up. That's not an attitude of praying without ceasing. That's praying with ceasing. You stop the prayer. And you stop the call. And then you wonder, why doesn't God talk to me? I said, you hung up. That's why you hung up. Just pick the, 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 the red phone back up and keep it on. You know, you have a direct line to God. The Bible tells us that we have one mediator, one go-between, one phone line that connects us to God, and that's Christ Jesus. He's the one that makes a way to God, but we get to have him on all the time. Leave it on. Now, this attitude, <clears throat> praying without ceasing, the sound men tell me when there's loud noises, just pause so they can cut it out. If I keep talking, I make it trouble for them. So, would you guys turn to first, <clears throat> first Samuel chapter twelve? I know we're doing Romans 12, but 1 Samuel 12, <clears throat> the great prophet Samuel, he's the, <clears throat> the last prophet that God will use for the nation Israel before that they, um, they kind of get away from having God be their king in this chapter. They, they actually had God as their king in all their battles up to this point. But because the chapter starts in um, verse 12, I know we did Romans 12, 12. Now we're doing 1 Samuel 12, 12. For ease, for your mind. The Lord spoke. He said, When, when you saw Nahash, the, the king of the sons of Ammon, and he came out against you, you said to me, No, but a king shall reign over us. 
Although it says, the Lord your God was your king. Now, Samuel's saying, you guys, when you saw nation, the, ne, I'm sorry, Nahash, <coughs> from the, the sons of Ammon, the Ammonites, came against you, you said, no, we, we want a king to reign over us. But Samuel told him, he says, but the Lord your God was your king. Talk about a downgrade. To trade in God as your king for a man as your king. So now therefore, Samuel says, here's the king whom you have chosen, whom you asked for. Behold, the Lord has set a king over you. And if you fear the Lord and you serve him, and you listen to his voice and do not rebel against him, and the command of the Lord, then both you and also the king who reigns over you will, uh, will follow the Lord your God. And if you will not listen to the voice of the Lord, but you rebel against the command of the Lord, then the hand of the Lord will be against you as it was against your fathers. Now even now, take your stand and see this great thing which the Lord will do before your eyes. He says, if the wheat harvest, is, is, is it not today? Take a look. He says, I will call to the Lord that he may send thunder and rain, and then you will know and see that your wickedness is great, which you have done in the sight of the Lord by asking for yourselves a king. And so Samuel called to the Lord, and the Lord sent thunder and rain that day, and all the people greatly feared the Lord and, and Samuel. Then all the people said to Samuel, Pray for your servants to the Lord your God, so that we might not die, for we have added to all our sins this evil by asking for ourselves a king. So Samuel said to the people, Do not fear. He said, You have committed all this evil, and yet do not turn aside from following the Lord, but serve the Lord with all your heart. For you must not turn aside, for then you would, you would go after futile things, and which would, cannot profit nor deliver, because they are futile. And the Lord will not abandon His people on account of His great name, because the Lord has been pleased to make you a people for Himself. But moreover, this is the prophet, he says, As for me, this is Samuel's heart, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord by ceasing to pray for you. But I will instruct you in the good and the right way. Only fear the Lord and serve Him in truth with all your heart, for consider what great things He has done for you. But if you do wickedly, both you and your king will be swept away. Now, ironically, if you read the next chapter, then Saul was 30 years old when the Lord made him to, be, uh, to, to begin his reign. And he would reign for 42 years, the first king of Israel. And would he have a heart for the Lord, this, this guy Saul? By the halfway through the chapter, the Lord is sending Samuel to speak to Saul and say, Saul, you're not listening to the Lord. The Lord's going to take you out as being king. He's going to replace you with a man who has a heart after his own heart. In verse 14 of chapter 13, it tells us that. And who's the man that was a, a man after God's own heart? David. David. So the first king was Saul. The next one would be David, who God would put in his place. A man after his own heart. But the instructions from, from Samuel to the people was, you guys got to make sure you serve the Lord in truth, with all your heart. And you got to consider what great things the Lord has done for you. You know, if we would just remember the great things God has done for us. How many times has the Lord protected us when we were traveling? You know, those near misses where you're like, whoa, that was so close. You, you, your hair bristled up on the back of your neck and you know it was your life. And even had the, the life flash before the eyes so close. I mean, wham, that they, they just clip you and, you're, and, you, and the Lord just spared you. You go, you know, if we think, how many great things has the Lord done for us? We would just remember that, be mindful like the prophet said. But this prophet said, far be it from me that I would sin against the Lord. By doing what? By ceasing to pray for you. You, you get to find out his prayer life. Samuel was praying for the people all the time. What a good, a good prophet. I mean, a, really, a man who spoke the word of God to the people. But it's because he talked to the Lord all the time about the people. He never stopped praying for them. 
And even when they were sinning and saying, we want a king like all the other people. We don't want God to be our king. Samuel actually, in another place, he, there's a little, little um, tell about him. He goes to the Lord and goes, Lord, they're, they're rejecting you as, the, as, your, as their king. They, they want a man, you know. Like, isn't this offend you? And the Lord goes, don't worry. This, this is, he knows their heart. This is the way people are. But you, you know, Samuel took great offense. But he did talk to the Lord. He said, guys, I'm not going to stop ceasing to pray for you. And I'm not going to stop see, I'm not going to stop instructing you in the way which is good and the way which is right. Here's what a true prophet does. He prays for the people and he instructs them to do what's good and to do what's right. That's what, that's really, if you, if you're a person that devotes yourself to prayer and to connecting, to be steadfast with God, you, you can't help it. You wind up being a person that is always helping people do what's good. Do what's right because you're talking to the author of all good. You're you're in constant communicate with the guy who does everything right. And he's going to give you the right things to speak to those people. Now back to Romans chapter 12. <clears throat> There's only two more instructions to do for love without hypocrisy. These last two, well, <clears throat> you guys, you probably read ahead already a few times, I hope. But he says the next one is, after you're devoted to prayer, he says you contribute to the needs of what? Of the saints. Did it go out? Card's full. Weird. What card? So, this one's still going, so... Okay, I'll have to make this quick. <laughs> it's pretty self-explanatory, right? See, a saint is a believer. So this isn't contribute to the Boy Scouts and the Girl Scouts that, you know, or to some club and say, well, I contributed to whatever uh, cause that called up on the phone. This is contributing to the needs of the believers. Do we have any believers in need that you guys know of? I mean, are there, there you know, I guess because I'm, you know, as a pastor, I get a lot of newsletters and emails and requests and, you know, just letters from the people we pray for all the time. You know, Ron Miller in Thailand for the orphanage. One of the gals has gotten really sick and they, they, the hospital bill is piling up. Our brother Michael Ullman in the Philippines. He's, uh, they, they had extreme flooding. We saw pictures. Of, he sent in a, a newsletter. I can bring it up on the computer for anyone interested. It's really cute, but not cute in a way. The kids are all in Rubbermaid chairs at the desk with a, with a table, and they got computers on the table, and the water is up to their waist. And I'm like, aren't they getting electrocuted? Because they wouldn't, and, and, and Michael writes, do not worry, they are not being electrocuted. The electric is run from the ceiling down to the computer. And it's only that far away from the bottom of the desk, and the... If one of those kids knocks one of those things over, they're going to zap them on. You know, they're, they're, but they don't want to not go learn. So they go sit in this flooded out building with the computers up on the table. I'm like, and we, uh, we can't even get kids to go to school. <laughs> I mean, th these kids are like, we're not going to not go. You know, here's the, he, he sent me the picture. I was like, <sighs> but we got to, we, when it says contribute to the needs of the saints, I look at those guys and go, they need way more than we do. We, we collect those cans and bottles and stuff and send them to the missionaries. And we we really collecting what we call cast-offs. You know, people are just like chucking it. Man, eh, we're going to throw that away. But to them, it's a big deal. Because one of our dollars is 30 of the dollars in Thailand. So it's a, for Ron over there, it's a, it's a pretty big deal. I mean, you know... We, we go, well, we only sent $200. You know, well, 200 times 30 is 6,000 of their dollars. So our can money, you know, is a big deal. And for Michael over there in the Philippines, same thing. I don't remember what the, the cur conversion rate is today, but, but it's a big amount they get for our, for our dollars. So I'm very grateful that we can contribute to the needs of the saints. And the last one that we're supposed to do, the, the, guys, you just do that 
Jesus says, God loves a cheerful giver. I never like talking about giving because people think, oh, you're after my money. I'm not, man. I'm after God to support me. He's very kind at doing things to support us in ways that, you know, if, if, I, if I had time, I could tell you a whole, just story after story, testimonies of how God supplied for our family. And just to show that there's a living God. Not too many people want this job when they find out it doesn't come with a lot of pay. But it comes with a lot of cool miracles to keep you going, which are better than pay, I think, because it shows me God is real. And then the last one that we should do <coughs> is practice what? Hospitality. And hospitality, this is one of those things that, well, the book of Hebrews chapter 13 gives me all the motivation in the world to practice hospitality. Although, I have my wife's picture in this sermon today because she's the most hospitable person I know. And uh, she really does practice her hospitality every week when she does the feeding. And But it says in, in Hebrews 13, it says, Let love of the brethren continue. In verse 2 it says, And do not neglect showing hospitality to strangers. For by this some have entertained angels without knowing. Or the King James says, unaware. You don't know who it is that you're showing hospitality to. Here's another Greek study if you want. This is, hospitality is the word, um, it, it, it's philox, a you know. It's, um, philox is from phileo, or the word for brotherly love, to love. But it's more in the form of um, a command, like, you need to love. But enio is to love strangers. You have to love the ones that are not the ones that, you know. I mean, we, we're good in our culture at loving the ones that we know. Well, sometimes. Sometimes we know them too well. We're like, I don't love them at all. But some of you are going, I'd rather love the stranger. It's easier. <laughs> you don't know my uncle. Or you don't know my cousin, you know. But we're supposed to love with brotherly love those people God brings across our path. And here's the motivation. We actually don't know if we're, if we're entertaining an angel. I mean, can an angel come and take the form of a man? You could just show up and, and, and we don't know. It just might be there and knock on the door. Hello, anyone home? You know, we, we had that experience when we were really struggling. Many years ago, we were like, oh, we're, we're in a bad way. The bills are piling up, and you know, and I need your help. This old man came to our door, knocked on our door, knock, knock. He says, is, is Isidoro Manzo here? My full name. Now, they say my full name. I'm like, am I in trouble? Is he going to serve me papers or what? You know, because he's got something behind his back, and I'm thinking, okay, yeah, he's here. <laughs> I didn't want to say it was me, just, so, you know. He goes, this is for you. And I was like, so he knew. And, I, and he hands me an envelope. And I look down at the envelope, sealed. So I, I start to peel it open. And I look inside, and it's a cashier's check to me. It was for $10,000. I was like, thank you, God. You know, because our bills are piled up. And I'm like, and then I looked up, where's the guy? And I mean, he was old. There's no way he scadooted that fast. I mean, he was just right there, right, right. I push the screen open. I look. I go in the front yard. I look. And from my house, you can see every ankle around. I live on the corner, you know. He's gone. I'm like, this dude vanished. And I've never seen him. I'm like, I haven't seen this fellow before. I wish I'd see him again. But I haven't seen him. Well, I mean, I'm just... I'm not going to lie. He can come back any time. You know, come buddy. Bring more checks, you know. That was great, you know. But but it was it was that time when, you know, we were like, Lord, do you really want us to be here? You know, you, you have to show me that you're still with me because we're having all these troubles and I don't know. And I goes, I'm with you. I'm like, yeah, well, you're with me, but my bills are piling up. Now, one thing is, you know, this is back to prayer. Can you pray about, give us this day our daily bread? Lord, you know the bills are piling up. We need to pay these bills. Did, 
they'd send these guys called collectors, Lord, if you don't pay. You know, like I'm educating God. He doesn't know this. <laughs> but sometimes that's how my prayers go. You know, like, hey, Lord, I need your help down here with this thing. And, and the Lord goes, don't worry. You know, I can, I can send an angel in. And he can, he can, we always joke, he could just drop one penny in our tie box. One of those copper 1940, what is it, two or three? 43. You know the one that's a real rare one that's worth like $100,000? Just put one of those pennies in my box, Lord, you know? And and the, and the guys laugh at me like, you don't think God could really do that, do you? And I'm like, is that really hard for the Lord? Like, send one angel with the penny, sticks it in the box, and there you go. And you're going... But Lord, I have these big bills you don't understand. And, oh, and he's going, look in the, you know, look at the change. Because we always look at, we want the big check. And, or we want the big thing. And it's nothing for the Lord to supply in ways that we're not even thinking. That's why I gave up trying to tell God how to supply. Do not even bother to tell God Almighty with all power, with all, with, with all sorts of ways, I mean, how many of you would have thought of just taking bread and blessing it and then breaking it and saying, here, sit down, everybody, 5,000 men. Here, just pass this out. Oh, taxes what? are due? Yeah. Go, go throw a line in the ocean. Yeah. In the first fish's mouth. Yeah, pull out the first fish and open its mouth. And there, there's the tax money, not just for Peter, but it was for Peter and Jesus. Go ahead and, for two men, tax is a golden coin in its mouth, a stater. Go take that and pay our taxes. Now, how many of you would like that when taxes are due? You know? Like Go fishing. <laughs> and then you'll have your money to pay. I mean, that's like, I don't think in my normal mind, like that's not my default no. setting. But I love to remember what God can do and how he can send strength. And just telling you guys these testimonies is good for me because it's like the Lord just reminded me. Remember when I did that? Is it good for us to recall the things what God has done? Sure. Sometimes we just need a reminder so we go back to remembering, yeah, that's right. The God I serve, He can do really cool things. And we got to remember, well, here it says, we need to remember the prisoners, verse 3, as if though we were in prison with them, and those that are ill-treated, since you yourselves are in the body. And the marriage bed, he says, it's to be held in honor amongst all, and it's not to be, it, it, it is to be undefiled. For fornicators and adulterers, he says, God will judge. And verse 5, make sure that your character is free from the love of money. Be content with what you have. For he himself has said, I will never desert you, nor will I ever forsake you. So that we may confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What will, what, what will man do to me? Gosh, I just need to remember this. Who's our helper? The Lord. You know, sometimes we're like, oh, but I can't show hospitality to the strangers. May, I, I might have to feed them lunch. And like, who do you think is going to give you the money to get lunch? Or who is it that brings you the lunch? You know? The Lord. Don't forget who's your helper. Don't forget how great a helper he is. That's my word for you this week. Just remember how great the Lord is. And it makes all of these instructions of, of living life without hypocrisy easy to do. Because your attention's on the one who gives us everything we need to be generous to those in need, to, to take care of strangers when, when, when God puts them in our path. And we never know. We never know what God will do using us in this life, do we? It's kind of fun. It makes it an adventure. So next week, if you would read ahead in Romans 12, we're going to see the attitude, now that we have the instructions what to do, we're going to see the attitude of how to do it with these instructions. And the attitude is just one paragraph from verse 14 to the end of the chapter, but it's an attitude that includes keeping God in the central part of your thinking and the way that you deal with, with things. So read ahead for me if you would. We'll go over that next week, and we'll see what the Lord will do in, in our lives. So let's pray. Father, thanks for, for giving us a beautiful morning in the house. And thanks for uh, 
making the rain just to kind of lighten up right now so we can get everyone to their cars. And Lord, we have the rain during this during this study, Lord. But I, I pray it just brought water to our plants to bring life around us, Lord. And, and, and accompanied with that, as we prayed before, that, that outpouring of your Spirit, Lord. We sing that song, Grace Like Rain. May your grace be poured out into our hearts and our minds as we go through the rest of this week, Lord. Be with us. In Jesus' name I pray. Everyone that agree with me said? Amen. 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 You guys, may you go and have a blessed day in the Lord. And, uh, and just may He supply all you need. May He use you to be generous to help supply others' needs. And you'll see lots of blessings. Whenever you give, the Scripture says it'll be given to you. So don't you never go wrong in giving. Can't I'll give God. So have a blessed week doing that. Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com, and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo and God bless.